Hey everybody, it's Dr. Eric Paul Couch. We're back for another edition of Thyroid Thursday. And today we're going to talk about another uh, set of labs, what's possible. I know too many people get told that once you're diagnosed with hypothyroidism, you, you know, your thyroid gland is never going to recover. You just have to manage it with thyroid hormone. Allopathic community thinks it has to be T4. The functional medicine community thinks you need to do T4 and T3 because the thyroid gland makes T4 and T3. And then we've got the optimizer community who thinks probably higher doses of T3 are needed because we need to optimize the blood and that creates optimal tissue effect. And the reality is that, that none of those things are often the case. Um, just a general review, the thyroid gland does make all of the T4. Uh, it makes some T3, but most of the T3 in the body, that's the active hormone inside the cells, is produced when the T4 is brought into the peripheral cells, away from the thyroid gland, and converted to T3. That T3 gets used for a period of time, and then it goes back out into the bloodstream to go into another cell or tissue to be used for a period of time, and then come back out in the bloodstream, and then eventually it's metabolized. Okay, so when we're thinking about how do we address thyroid physiology, there's a couple of thought processes. One is the glands where the problem starts, and if we just replace what the gland might make, primarily T4, all should be good in the world. And unfortunately, that's not the case. Um, in the functional medicine community, an integrative community, they realize that the gland's dysfunctional, they realize that the gland makes T4, but they also think that the gland makes T3, and it does, and so therefore we need to look at the T3 levels, and if we're, if our T3 or free T3 levels are low, then we also need to give T3 and optimize how much T3 is in the blood and if we optimize both T4 and T3, then that's gonna to correlate to better thyroid physiology in the tissues. And the problem is that the quantity that you put in the blood or the quantity of thyroid hormone in the blood doesn't necessarily correlate with what's going on in the cells. Cells and tissues operate in one of two modes. They're either in a low stress homeostatic state where they wanna bring a lot of thyroid hormone in, bind it to receptors, stimulate the metabolism, we feel good, we function good, we're at the right weight, life is good. But cells that are perceiving stress or danger due to emotional stress, due to organisms, toxins, uh, thoughts, foods, those inflammatory signals cause a downregulation um, of the cell physiology. And one of the things we need to do, do to downregulate the cell physiology under these stress conditions is to downregulate the conversion of T4 to T3. And when that happens, then there's reduced T3 in the bloodstream. And so adding more T3 really doesn't fix the underlying issue. The underlying issue is the excessive cell stress. And if the cells already didn't want to convert T4 to T3, and why would giving more necessarily fix the problem? It doesn't, but can you manage signs and symptoms with some T additional T3? Absolutely. Um, it's a matter of what you're trying to accomplish. And for this person, this is a person who was struggling with thyroid issues for about 10 years. They've got multiple um, other conditions. They've got, a, a, I think, a gut-based colitis issue going on. They've got um, some other immune-related issues going on. But they've tried a lot of allopathic strategies. They tried a lot of functional medicine strategies. And while they're getting by, they're just getting by. So the bowel's still an issue. Their other immune issues are a problem. They don't have um, antibodies for their thyroid physiology, so they're not officially Hashimoto's. They've just been diagnosed with hypothyroidism. So initial labs, when we meet, they're on one gram of armor, and they took their armor before they had the blood draw done in the morning. Now, should, a lot of times people ask, should I take my meds bef before I get my blood draw? Should I wait to take my meds until after the blood draw? It really depends on who you're working with and what you're trying to assess. In this situation, the person took it. Um, I typically don't wanna see them take their T3-based medications before the blood draw because I wanna see how well they convert without the T3 in their system, but in this situation, they took it. So TSH is 1.20. Total T4 is 6.7, total T3 is 94, 
Free T4 is 1.21, free T3 is 3.0, reverse T3 was not done, and the free T3 to free T4 ratio was 0 0.30. Now, usually I say, hey, we got to look at this free T3 to free T4 ratio. This is a telltale sign that there's an under conversion issue going on, but keep in mind, this person's taking T3. So the T3 they took and their total T3 is still only 94. It's within the lab range, but below what some people might call an optimal range and it's definitely step probably below where somebody who's promoting T3 might think this should be. Free T3 is at 3.0. That might be within somebody's functional range, but a lot of the people providing T3 think that that number often should be higher. Um, but when we're measuring the free T3 to free T4 ratio, keep in mind this Free T3 and total T3 are only at that level because they took T3 before the blood draw. So this is an artificial boost of T3 and free T3. So what it tells me is that without this T3 in the system, this person is a really poor converter of T4 to T3. And that makes sense because this is a person who's got chronic inflammatory processes going on, many of them stemming from their GI tract. So somebody manipulated their blood levels to not look too bad, but this person's highly symptomatic, lots of signs and symptoms, lots of problems. So we start going through my strategy, my, I call it my strategic thyroid solution strategy, and here's all the key things that we kind of focus on. What's contributing to the excessive stress load? Is this person on an appropriate dose of thyroid hormone? Um, can we re identify and reduce start reducing or eliminating those stressors, and then we need to start supporting the recovery of the systems. And I've talked about this in other videos. So after, over the process of a year, we started working on the process, the pertinences and signs and symptoms started improving. Um, they, we had to start dropping the dosages of armor with the help of their prescribing physician. So this is one year later, working through this strategic thyroid solution we talked about in the book, The Thyroid Debacle. No medication for two months, TSH 1.6, totally normal. Total T4 is 7.1, total T3 is 92. Um, free T4 1.39, free T3 is still 3.0. This is without T3 medication or T4 medication. The reverse T3 is 10 and their free T3 is 0.26. So this is actually lower now, okay? So you can say, well, this is worse, but this is an actual conversion of T4 to T3. So this person is making, their thyroid gland is able to make thyroid hormone without the armor. Um, so they have plenty of thyroid hormone, actually more than they did before. Um, their T3 numbers haven't really changed. This was with armor, this is without the T3 medication before the draw and free T4 to free T3, that conversion is better. Still lower than I want to see it, but keep in mind, we've got a person with a chronic uh, GI pathology, this kind of colitis process going on. Um, so we work, continue to work on their diet lifestyle factors. The person is uh, doing better and better. I think at the point of this one year mark, uh, you know, we're somewhere in the 60, 70% improvement. Um, we had another set of labs done in between here, but now we're at the two year mark and we want to see how they're doing. Now they're seven months, no medication, TSH 1.67, still good. Total T4, 7.9, still good. Total T3 dropped, it dropped down to 87. Uh, free T4 went up to 1.46 and free T3 went down to 2.9 and reverse T3 went up to 21.9. Uh, free T3 to free T4 ratio is 0 0.21. And so this looks like, oh my gosh, the person's getting worse. Why would you show this? Because I want to make a point here. The person had a flare of some of their GI symptoms. That happens, okay? It happens to all of us. We all have issues. We can get, we can work, do a gut protocol and then a year later we have another issue with our gut. We have to be constantly managing and nurturing our, our physiology. But this is a person who somebody might quickly say, well, your T3 and free T3 are down and your reverse T3 is up, let's put you back on that T3. But the reality is this is an appropriate response to some type of flare in their gut. Do they need more thyroid hormone to optimize their blood? No, they don't. What we need to do is focus on, adjust, on addressing the flare of their GI system and they'll do fine like they did before. 
but another case where somebody's gland was able to recover, they were able to do better conversion and reduce their signs and symptoms. If you want that kind of help and improvement, uh, go to my profile, schedule a complimentary discovery call, or go to my website, rejuvagencenter.com, schedule a complimentary discovery call, and let's see what we can do to help you get off your thyroid medication uh, roller coaster ride. All right, hope this helps. Take care.